Good evening, and welcome back. I have in my hand a simple light bulb. But this light bulb is a symbol of innovation and creativity. Bing! It has driven our modern society since it was invented, like in the Industrial Revolution. But it's also a symbol of our stupidity and our unwillingness to take action. I'll come back to that. There are multiple crises, human-induced crises, threatening the planet at the moment. Deforestation, nutrient loading, pollution, climate change. If left unchecked, they will destroy our civilization. The fact is, we're addicted to economic growth and the unrestrained consumerism that, that drives it. The bulb is not the elephant in this room. We are, including me. We drove here tonight. We went on holiday for Easter. Italian suit, French shoes, American iPhone. I see you. Just out of interest, how many of you have switched all your old incandescent light bulbs for energy efficient LEDs? Show of hands, please. Less than, less than half. You notice I didn't raise my hand. How many of you have switched their energy supplier to 100% green energy? Show of hands. Less than a quarter. There's a lot of elephants in this room. Now, survival is one of the basic human instincts. However, over the duration of human history, many civilizations have destroyed themselves, the Mayans, the Greeks, the Romans, and so on. This civilization, the modern civilization, is the first civilization that actually knows we're destroying ourselves. Also, we know how to stop it. We're doing it on a global level, and we're doing it faster than ever before. The topic of my speech tonight is going to focus on climate change. It equates to the story of the frog in hot water. You may have heard it if you put a frog in boiling water. I haven't done it. It jumps out. But if you put a frog in warm water and heat it up slowly, it boils to death. We're the frog, the water is our planet, and the heat is the CO2 emissions. We are consciously heating up our planet and we're loving it. I'm enjoying it. Now, I could stand here today and show you multiple graphs and proof that CO2 emissions rising means temperature rising, human-induced climate change. However, I'm going to assume in this audience that you agree with the 97% of scientists who believe that climate change is human-induced. Um, I'm going to leave it at that. Coming back to addiction, the first step to solving addiction is awareness. Now, we've been aware of climate change science for over 100 years. However, we've only recently been, in the 1980s, been aware of the catastrophic consequences that they could bring us. This graph is from 1982. No CO2 emissions, no real temperature change. CO2 emissions from humans, and it forecasts approximately two degree temperature rise by 2030. The irony is this graph was presented by ExxonMobil in 1982. And as you know, they went into denial ever since. And as you know, and I certainly know, that the second step on the road to recovery from addiction is not denial. We need to take action, and we need to take action urgently. But again, ironically, this was a statement from 1991 by by Shell. 30 years later, we're burning fossil fuels faster than ever, CO2 emissions are accelerating, and there is massive financial subsidies to, to fossil fuels. In fact, currently, it's three times fossil fuels in red, three times what renewables receive in the blue bars. 
So I was at Paris in 2015 at the COP21 when countries unanimously agreed to hold temperatures below 2 degrees, aim for 1.5 degrees, that's the green. But subsequent to that, the countries then need to take action. They call it effort sharing. So which country does what action when? But of course, effort sharing, you know, they will only take action that serves their own self-interest. And the result is that the blue bar of business as usual is incrementally improved by the pink bar, which is what the countries have agreed to do. So instead of two degrees, we are rapidly heading towards four degrees. That is the elephant in the room. We are unable individually or collectively to take action. This graph shows you where we've come from, the start of the Industrial Revolution, and where we are today. This is CO2 emissions accumulating in the atmosphere, heading towards the 1.5 and then the 2 degree budget. So where we stopped there, 2015, is about 1.2 degree temperature rise, which we've reached already. But I'll leave it to you to judge whether you, can think, you think we can slow this down, stop it, and even reverse it before we get to 1.5. That hopefully makes you think. When will we reach 1.5 and 2 degrees? Well, Carbon Tracker estimate that at current emissions, we'll reach it in six years, and we'll reach 2 degrees in about less than 20 years. It's interesting to note that two degree temperature rise is not a comfortable level. It's just a level below which scientists believe, they can't guarantee, they believe will hold climate change. It will not be irreversible or catastrophic. However, two degrees locks us into increased floods, droughts, migration, disease, and sea level rise, basically the apocalypse. Two degree temperature rise lockers into a 2.5 meter sea level rise, making large parts of London, New York, Shanghai, Holland, Florida uninhabitable. Now there is some good news. It took me till slide 15 to get to the good news, but here is the good news. The last two years, we have decoupled CO2 emissions from economic growth. So we can continue growing our economy whilst reducing CO2 emissions in orange. And the reason for that is we are undergoing a massive energy transition. Out of the six main drivers of human-induced CO2 emissions, energy is the largest, and it's there where we're making the largest impact. It is an economic transition that we're undergoing a huge, disruptive energy transition. Solar and wind power are energy technologies. The more you install, the lower the price goes. Fossil fuels are energy resources. The more you use them, the harder it is to get them, the more expensive they get. Solar power has reduced in price 99% since 1976 and over 80% in the last eight years and it's continuing to fall by over 10% per year and will do for the next 10 years. It is now cheaper than any other power source in most regions of the world. Even the Museum of Coal in Kentucky, US, is powered by solar. For economic reasons, not environmental. And last Friday, for the first time since fossil fuels were started to be burnt for electricity, the UK electricity system was coal-free. Again, for economic reasons. Clearly with threat, with challenge, comes opportunity. Here's the opportunity, a massive business opportunity. This is uh, solar power growth over the next decades. Renewables are now installing more power per year than fossil fuels. The IEA, a traditionally conservative fossil, uh, fossil fuel organization, forecasts that solar power could install by 2050 6,000 terawatt hours of production. It's about 15% of global electricity consumption. I believe that we could and should bring that forward to about 2030. Again, we need to take action. Solar power creates jobs. 
In the US alone, over 260,000 people are now employed in the solar industry. That's twice coal. One in 50 new jobs are in the solar industry. And renewables are changing the energy in three ways. The three Ds, we call them. Firstly, decarbonisation. Renewables, wind and solar, are clean, both locally and globally. Secondly, decentralisation. Not only does solar power alleviate poverty, but it also provides access to electricity for the 1.2 billion people who don't have it. And finally, decentralised. This is energy independence. Solar power is fast and easy to install, and it allows you to generate your own power. You can self-consume electricity off your roof like you self-consume vegetables from your garden. So we can go far with solar. This is a plane called Solar Impulse. It flew around the world without fuel. But the question is, can we change fast enough? Now, with uncertainty, of course, comes hope. However, I believe leaders are not leaders, they're actually followers. It's up to us to take action, both individually and persuade decision makers to take action. We need to take a precautionary principle. Solar power is a no-regret solution, but will we survive? Will we? Well, the bulb is now in your hands.